Welcome back, and we're ready to start the easy mapping of our serial box. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to head and get rid of the history. Um, the history is applied um, so you can go back and change things, but if you're happy with your model, once your model is finished, if you don't need to make changes to it, you no longer need the history. So um, before we start UV mapping, when you get to the UV mapping stage, let's go ahead and delete the history. Go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. And that will clear it out in the Channel Box and Layer Editor. So the Channel Box <coughs> will let you know what the history is. And it's good to have history on the box, or anything you're modeling, so you can go back and make changes. But when you are finished and your, um, your model's looking exactly the way you want it, and you don't need to make changes, I would delete by Type History. Another thing you need to think about is that you want to have your transforms zeroed out. If your transforms are not zeroed out, you could have some problems um, bringing models into another scene. You always want to bring the model in at a zero, zero axis. So let's go ahead and do modify freeze transformations. I'll show you that's where it is. And you also want to make sure your pivot point is centered. Mine is centered, but what if it isn't on yours? then go to Modify Center Pivot. Okay, now you are s ready to go. Um, when you're UV mapping, you really need to have your model facing the Z. So, um, actually doing a mirror on one side, or um, adding, um, doing a map, uh, you really want to be facing the Z, so try to remember to model facing the Z. It makes life a little more, a little easier. And your free ports will actually um, work better that way too as well. So you can see that I'm in the front view and that's the front of my box and this is the side view so they they actually coincide with what's happening in the perspective. So always uh, model with uh, the front in the Z axis. Okay, let's go to Let's go to the uh, UV texture editor. Okay, let's have that opened up, and this is kind of what it—it's how it's laid it out. And this is not necessarily the way I want to have the UVs laid out. You could definitely keep them that way, but it really won't work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that, get that out of the way. Now, what I'm going to do here with this particular box is I'm going to make it easier on myself right away and just kind of split up all the UVs. And I find that if you just add an automatic map to it just to get started, um, it's very helpful. And I do that on all of my models, and then I take the time to go back and um, move the UVs around, and I'll show you how to do all that. So let's go and um, go into Create UVs. I'm holding down my spacebar, Create UVs, and go to Automatic Mapping. And let's just reset the settings, and the default settings are fine. Just project it. And let's go back into UVs, open that up, and you can see how it's laid it out. Now, these corresponding UVs, um, they basically will correspond um, with the UVs in your scene. So um, to find out where my UVs are, I can click on Faces or UVs if you want to move UVs around in UV Texture Editor. What I'm doing is I'm holding down my uh, right mouse button and I can click on Face and just select Faces and you can see that's the front of the box. I can click Off and the UVs come back. What I want to do is I want to take all the UVs out Okay, and I'm going to hit the W key and move them. So hit the W key and move them. And I'm moving around in my um, my uh, UV texture editor the same way I would move in an orthographic view in Maya. I'm holding down the Alt key and the middle mouse button allows me to move around. Holding down the Alt key and the right mouse button allows me to zoom in. Okay, so. Um, one, things, one of the things you need to remember when you're moving UVs around, if they snap, 
um, you need to turn your snapping off up here. So you can see that up here, if I had the snapping on, it does this weird thing. And that's not what you want. I'm going to do a Control Z back and turn snapping off. If that ever happens to you, it's because you have snapping on or you left it on accidentally. Alright, so I'm going to show you something really fun and cool. Instead of having, you have to select all these UVs separately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select one corner. The UV, I'm going to right mouse button, hold down, go to select, and go to select shell. And that selects the whole entire shell. So I'm going to move that up. Okay, that's the front. Okay, so I'm going to move that in and down. And I want to find out which corner is which. That coincides with my viewport here. So I know that's the front of the box. So I'm going to select this corner. And sure enough, it's selecting the right corner. Sometimes these UVs get flipped and turned around. Okay, but that's actually working really well. So I'm going to pull that over like that. Oops. So I'm going to select those, pull this over. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to go in here and I am going to find the sides of the box. And I'm thinking this is one of the sides of the box. So I'm going to right click over it, go to select and select shell. And continue this process. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to find I want to make this seamless across. So I'm going to try to find where this attaches over here. It looks like this is over here. So I'm going to look and click on the edge. Okay. So it's selecting the back. Okay. So that's really not coinciding with anything. So I'm going to click on this one right here. There it is. So let's move these UVs over here for now because it looks like these edges when I select edge and click on this edge right here they they work together so that'll give us a nice seam right there as you can see I can see it in there the viewport so alright and so I'm gonna go back into UVs so right click and select UVs and I'm gonna right click and go to um, select select shell and move that over and I'm guessing this side over here is going to be so I'm going to click on edge and make sure those are those those are working together that's great and so the next piece, I'm going to select the UVs over here and go to select, select shell, move that over. And I'm going to right click and click on edge and select this edge. And I notice that it's working, it's selecting that edge over there. Well, let's take a look and see what's happening with that. Okay, that's okay to have a seam right there in the back to the side. You always want to put a, you're going to have to have a seam somewhere, unfortunately, on your cereal box. Here's that seam there. And we need to rotate this around. So let's take a look at which direction these UVs are facing. So this is actually flipped around the wrong way. This should be down. So let's go ahead and rotate this. To rotate it, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it by pushing this icon, rotate icon. And I'm going to zoom in, go to edge mode, and see if those edges coincide. And they do. So now we've got all the edges for that. Let's connect everything together now, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to select these edges here. We're in edge mode now in the UV texture editor. I'm going to go all the way down. You have to make sure you get all of these edges. Sometimes that can be a pain. So you have to zoom in, move around, go to polygons, and go to move and sew edges. 
and notice that we it basically takes it the edges and sews them together in a nice line let's do the same thing with this one up here select that one and shift select I'm holding on the shift key holding down the shift key and then we're gonna do move and sew polygons move and sew edges so we're just moving and sewing edges together and going right down the line okay polygons move and sew All right there we go so we've got uh, the front the back the side the side so we know where things are at that looks really good. Let's go to UVs again and let's kind of move this around so it fits really nicely. Kind of in the center. There we go. Something like that. Okay. We want to make sure that the uh, UV UVs do not go out the the dark gray UV texture area. Okay, you never want to do that. Let's go in here and make sure that doesn't happen. And let's uh, grab these guys over here, move them a little closer, find out what's going on with these. And let's select one corner, right click over the object, go to select, select shell, and move that away from the other one so you can easily move it around. What we want to do is we, we, we want to find the top of the box. So let's just select a edge. So right click, go to edge, and select an edge and find out where that edge is. That's the bottom of, it looks like the bottom of the box. Let's select this other edge over here and find out if we can find, there we go. Let's put, I want to have the seam in the back, so the front I want to keep, I don't want to have a seam in the front, so I'm going to go ahead and take this, and we need to rotate it this way, One, this way like that, and move it down and let's select the edges and see if we got it facing the right way. Yep, we do. So let's select the edges here. Hold down the shift key. There we go. There we go. And then go to polygons and move until UVs. Okay, that looks great. And now we want to go in here. Select this guy right here. Uh, we, we need to go into UVs. So right click, go to UVs, select UVs. So we can move them. Hit the W key and move it over. And let's find out. Go back to edge mode. Right click. Go to edge mode. Find out where that is. Go to this one here. That's what I want. I want the top one. So the front top. And then let's rotate that around. Go right click and go to edge mode. And select. Yep, that works. So I'm going to zoom in and shift select this edge and shift select this edge and let's go ahead and one last thing move and sew UVs so there it is there's our cereal box laid out and we have minimal seams um, the seam we do have is going to be shown where it's broken so we'll have a seam there a seam there a seam right here and a seam on the sides and we'll look at where the seams are there we go so here's a box so we've got some uh, some seams and they're all in the back or the sides so it's not going to be as noticeable um, when you have something going from one edge to the next you'll just have a little break and as long as you know where your seams are and you're okay with that and you know how to manipulate it in Photoshop to make them look good so they don't look like seams then you're good to go so now we've got our um, our UVs finished so make sure you save uh, your scene it'll save the UVs so I'm actually gonna need to create a scene so let's go ahead and do that uh, project window and I'm gonna create new and I'm gonna name this serial box Now since I'm on my computer at home, I'm 
doing it to the C drive, but you can actually click on this folder right here and tell it where you want to set up your projects. And as long as you have all these folders and you uh, set out accept, it will set a project to your hard drive, your flash drive. Um, this is how you do it. Just go to project window, click new, and make sure you click on the folder where you want it to go. And um, make sure it's the directory that you want it to go to. So um, click accept. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and save scene as. I'm going to call this serial box. And you probably want to save a little more than I have. And because um, you want to save in the modeling stage several times, depending on you know how complex the model is. And you want to save a lot during the UV mapping phase because um, Maya crashes like anything else, like any other software. And if it does while you're working, it won't save automatically. So uh, just remember that as, as well. So I'm going to just kind of save in a sequence, always save in a sequence. You can save in numerical values or um, serial box A, B, C, D, but um, whatever works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I might even put a little tag on the end that uh, UV, that's always helpful when you come back and try to find out uh, what step you are in. So I'm going to click Save As. Okay. So once you save, you're ready to save your UVs. Right now, the UVs are saved with the Maya uh, file, but they are not saved um, as a file for Photoshop. Okay, so after uh, we have the uh, UVs laid out, the next thing we need to do is go into um, Mesh and Smooth, and we're going to smooth this at 3. Let's go ahead and smooth that. And notice now we now have a nice smooth faces. And this will look really nice in some good lighting. So let's go ahead and select that. And notice that um, it doesn't really change any of the borders. If I go back, and you notice that the borders don't change. So that is exactly what we want. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. The next step is to make sure the object is selected. And I'm going to go and go into polygons and go into UV snapshot. And we want to make sure that we have the size at X at 2048 and the size at Y 2048. We want to keep aspect ratio on, color value white, anti-alias lines on, image format targa. The rest of it's defaulted. Click on browse and go ahead and type in serial box UV. Type that in next to file name. Click on save. And it's, it's telling me that I already have it in there, but I'll just click on yes and go ahead and click OK. Let's overwrite that. Yep. OK, so that looks good. And since that went through, um, it saved it out in the Images folder. And now we're ready to um, go into Photoshop and Texture.